This is David Fine with Keys Mods. A, uh, it's going to be an exciting video. I can't wait for this one. I just got a phone call from a friend uh, living here in Broward County. He found a gaudy Sphinx caterpillar. I have never seen one before in my life. In fact, I've only ever seen two adults. So this is going to be a first. I'm here with my kids. We're going to go check it out. Guys, stay tuned. It's going to be a good episode. If you're searching for just about any species of butterfly or moth, you can read a book or go online and find out where it might be seen and what time of year and have a good chance of seeing one. Well, the gaudy sphinx is not that bug. In fact, there's no place in time where I could confidently say, if you went here at this particular time of year and did this, you'd find one. That's The gaudy sphinx is a rare bug. I've only ever seen two. I'm excited about this. So we're here in Broward County, and what did you guys find? Morpha Nebraska. What did you guys find? Caterpillar. You guys found a caterpillar? Can you show him to me? Is he in there? Zeke, where's he at? Where's he at, man? <laughs> guys, do you know what that is? Morpha Nebraska. Body Sphinx caterpillar. I'm gonna open it right now. Watch this. This is a very, very cool bug. What? D guys, let me let me ask you a question. This kind of looks like something else, doesn't it? What does it look like? Like a snake. A snake. Like a snake, snake. right? And uh, do you know what it's called when something looks like something else in nature to pr to protect itself? What's it called, Lorenzo? Okay, well, it's a kind of camouflage, but it's called mimicry. It's called mimicry. Isn't that cool? You know, you know, I have to know exactly where you found this, right? This is this is citizen science at its best. So, this was it, huh? Yeah, this was full of that like vine, so we were weeding it, and all oh. of a sudden I saw a stick that was like twice its size, like twice its thickness. Yep. And I went to look close to it, and there it was. There it was, huh? This is vine. It's a bug one. The gaudy sphinx uh, typically eats plants in the grapevine family. But, uh, you know, we're, we're going to take a look around and see if we can't find some few more, right? After about an hour of searching for more caterpillars, we couldn't find any more. Uh, we gladly took our Sphinx larva home, uh, along with a gallon Ziploc bag full of its larval host plant, so that we could feed the caterpillar for the next few days. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you guys a few tips for uh, raising Sphinx larvae in your home. I want to say a special thanks to the Sonnenberg family for blessing us with Morpha Nebraska. Gaudy Sphinx, uh, first caterpillar we've ever seen. So, but what we're, we're gonna do right now is we're gonna show you guys how to uh, raise a Sphinx caterpillar. And we're gonna put them in this container here, this plastic container. What we're gonna do is we filled the bottom with dirt. And the reason we did that is because when the caterpillar is done um, eating and it's ready to make its pupa, what they do is they crawl down and they'll actually dig a hole in the dirt and bury themselves in the dirt and they'll pupate there and they'll probably stay there for a couple months and then well we got to keep it moist but what we have to do is uh when the when the sphinx moth emerged one of the m big mistakes that i made when i first raised sphinx moths is i didn't have anything for them to climb up on so this is like a smooth plastic side and they, they would, as they come out of the dirt, they would try to climb up so that they can hang and gravity uh, pulls their wings down so that the wing, they can pump blood through their wings and the wings will stretch out. If they don't hang upside down while they're drying out, then um, the wings won't fully form uh, the right way and they'll get deformed and they won't be able to fly. So what we do is we put a little piece of t uh, paper towel right here and we tape it along the backside. So when the, when the moth emerges, it can have a place to crawl up this is the food that we're gonna give the caterpillar to eat. And so that's a nice nice piece of food there. And we're gonna make a nice fresh cut. And that should be a good piece of food probably for a day or so that the caterpillar can eat. And we can do is we can place it right down inside of the water there. 
and then we can put our our water container with our stem with our leaves right inside of our container there all right now Sophie go ahead and open up okay so here is our Euphorpha Nebraska gaudy sphinx larva he's alive and well and he's doing really really good he's cruising around looking for some fresh food and so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put him right right in here and that's where he can stay. He has access to his fresh food. And then we have a lid that we put on top so he doesn't crawl out. And he'll eat like that. He just molted into a final instar. So he should probably have uh, probably another three or four days maybe, something like that of eating before he makes his pupa. So we're gonna feed him for three or four days and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we have our first reared gaudy sphinx. Right, Sophie? Fantastic. Now, we want to show you just how crazy cool this caterpillar is. Aside from being ridiculously rare and huge, uh, it's one of the best snake mimic examples that we have in all the caterpillars in North America. I mean, this thing looks just like a viper. Check it out. The cryptic brown and tan coloration of the caterpillar really resemble that of uh, many of the vipers of North America. It even has this fatty tissue around the thoracic region, which really resembles the, the flat V-shaped head of a viper. The large false eye spots on the thoracic region are wildly intimidating to a would-be predator. Uh, it even has some fake nostrils on the front and it even looks like it has the mouth of the snake as well. This thing is awesome! When the caterpillar is disturbed, what it does is it slowly retracts its head inside the fatty tissue of the thoracic region. But at the same time, on the butt end, there's a little tiny piece of reflective tissue and it twitches it over and over and over again. And what that does, it's very intentional, it draws attention uh, of the would-be predator away from the head and brings it to the rear end of the animal. See, if, if the bird attacks the head, the likelihood of uh, an injury that would be harmful would be probably pretty good and the caterpillar probably won't survive. But if, if a, a bird were to hit the back end, it might survive a, an attack. But the true beast of this caterpillar comes out when it gets disturbed. Now it's time for the bait and switch. After triggering that little reflective piece of tissue on the back end and drawing the attention of the predator back there, what the caterpillar does, well, it'll, it'll cock its head and thoracic region up in the air and actually turn its eye spots, its fake eye spots towards the predator and attempt to scare it. It actually looks just like a viper ready to strike. Let's put this in perspective. Imagine you're a hungry bird and you think you found yourself a great meal as a big fat caterpillar and you're getting ready to eat it. And all of a sudden you see this little tiny reflective light and it captures your attention just for a second. And, but then all of a sudden you have this creepy, eerie feeling that you're being watched. So you turn and look over your shoulder and you're, ah! Oh my goodness, what is that? It's a snake looking at you right in the face, ready to strike. That's enough to frighten any would-be predator away, guaranteed. Well, it's been about five days since we picked up our gaudy sphinx larva and um, he's eaten an entire bag full of biomass. And, so these things eat a ton, probably up to seven times their own body weight in food every single day. And so um, he's eating an entire bag just like this. And so we're gonna feed him now and see how that goes. Wait, it eats seven times his body weight in food every day? That's crazy. I mean, let's put that in perspective. I weigh about 200 pounds. And if I were to eat seven times my body weight in food every day, that would mean I would need to eat 5,600 quarter pounders with cheese every single day to eat, comparatively speaking, that same amount of food that the gaudy sphinx larva eats. And the gaudy sphinx larva is, is also a champion in another way because check out the size of his poo. Yes, that is poo. That's, that's impressive, dude. Tore up all the food that we got in there. It looks like he's pre-pupil. Yeah, so he's pre-pupil. And um, probably within the next day or so, he'll be digging under the, under the ground, making his pupa. 
can't believe I'm finally gonna get to see a gaudy sphinx pupa. We lucked out, man, right at that earlier clip where we were showing you the pre-pupa larva. About an hour later, we would have missed him. He'd be underground. Because I checked in the cage here, and look what I found. He is officially buried underground and making his pupa. I don't want to disturb him too much. There he is. Come on. We officially have a gaudy pupa. Check it out. Whoa. Dude, relax. He almost wiggled right off the table. That would not have been good. Dude, where are you going? Gaudy, where are you going? He doesn't like being out of the dirt. <laughs> so, um, I, I brought our little gaudy Sphinx pupa out of the dirt now. I love Sphinx pupa because you can see how active they are in their little abdomens twirling around there. So uh, one of the things that you can see in a sphinx pupa are all the parts of the body, that are the external parts, uh, you can see the chambers in which they develop. And so you can see the abdominal chamber there moving around. Um, and then right here would be the thorax, the thoracic chamber. And then of course up at the front would be the, the head. And then on the side, on each side of the head, you can see where the eyeball or the compound eye forms there, the eye chamber. And then we have um, along the, all the way down the sides of the pupa, you see the, the little black dots here. Those are sphericals. That's where that they actually breathe. And they actually do breathe, uh, even in the pupa stage. Through there's, there's little holes that are here, which they breathe from. And then you can see the wing pad here. This is where the wings develop, this big, long pad here. And then there's, there should be one on each side. And then right down the middle of the wing pad, uh, you can see the proboscis chamber. And starting from the head, there's two equal chambers that run, little lines that run all the way down the length of the wing pad. And those, that is where the two different ha halves of the proboscis develop. And uh, the proboscis is actually like a straw, and it develops in two pieces. So you have two half straws that develop. And the first thing that the moth does when it emerges from the pupa is it has to fuse those two pieces together so that it can eat. And then also you see along, whoop, he's twisting around. He doesn't like being on his back. Um, next to the uh, proboscis chamber, you see the leg chambers. And you can actually see where the, where the legs develop inside of these chambers here. And then finally, on the outside of the leg chambers, you see the antenna chamber, which is right here. It starts from the back of the head, and then runs all the way down here. So that's where the antenna developed. Same thing on each side. So as you can see, my, our little gaudy Sphinx pupa is not happy out of the dirt. He's not happy being disturbed. So we are going to go ahead and put him back now so that he can develop in peace. I can't wait anymore. Would you come out already? About three weeks. Still waiting. The day is finally here. The gaudy sphinx has emerged. Check this bad boy out. Finally, finally here. Oh. <laughs> wow. Look at that bad boy. Oh my goodness, what a gorgeous, gorgeous moth. Right? Let's see if I can get him to crawl up on here. Okay, ready? Yeah. Crawl up Check out that eagle, man. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous creature, isn't it? Let's see. Isn't this awesome? This is really pretty, yes. It's a beautiful moth. See, this is the most beautiful woman in the world and the most beautiful <laughs> moth in the world. I dare you to put it on your... Uh, I can't believe she did it. It's like <laughs> in her hair. She's scared. No, don't do that. <laughs> All right. 
Oh man, it's been a long, long time since I've seen one of these guys, probably 15 years. Finally, after 15 years, I see an adult gaudy sphinx, and it's a reared one, uh, immaculate. Isn't it gorgeous? Fantastic. This is a gorgeous moth, and it's a big day, so uh, I'm excited. I'm an excited guy. Mr. Gaudy, you're a cool dude. <laughs> Yeah, he's getting ready to fly now. And they warm up their body by vibrating their wings like that. That means he's ready. He's getting ready to take off. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to let our little dude go. Yeah, I think we're going to just put him... Be well, dude, and take care. All right, Mr. Gaudi, time to say goodnight, man. Me and the Gaudi Sphinx say goodnight. Peace out. Awesome, man. Nice to see you. Thanks for hanging with me. All right, kids, so what did you guys think of the Gaudi Sphinx? What was cool, like, when it, like, stuck up his head, like when you disturbed it, um, all the, like the, um, the big eyes go up mm -hmm. and to scare predators away. What, what, what's it called when an animal does that? It's called mimicry. Mimicry. Sophie, what about you? It's, I actually like the flashing light um, on the tail part yeah. because, I don't know why, it's just interesting because and I also like that I can move its fake eye. That <laughs> and um, and and when you actually look at it in person, it looks really weird and creepy. Right. That creepy brown caterpillar that looks like a snake turns into a beautiful green moth. Huh? I know, right? Isn't, it, isn't metamorphosis amazing? Yeah. It's incredibly designed how they can they can turn in from a snake looking caterpillar into a, a pupa and then right in the pupa they come out this beautiful green and red and blue moth. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I I was kind of shocked when I found out that it wasn't eating on a like a tree or a bush. It was actually eating on a vine. On a vine? On the grapevine. And also I'm really surprised that we took a whole jug of um of Plant. Grape, grape vine, and he ate all of it in like in four in days. In just a couple of days, he yeah. ate a whole gallon worth of uh, gallon worth of grape vine, right? And yeah, we had to go back yeah, and get go back. Yeah, so <laughs> it was like incredible. So guys, thank you so much for uh, helping me raise the gaudy sphinx. Uh, it was a great experience, wasn't it? Yeah. Rock on. Enjoy South Florida, guys. As you can see, the gaudy sphinx is a stunning moth. It totally puts to death that old statement that moths are ugly. <laughs> I remember as a kid just looking in books, it's the only way I knew of a gaudy sphinx was from books. Uh, I remember seeing pictures and just went, I would love to see one of these things. Here's a few facts about the gaudy sphinx. Its Latin name, Eumorpha labresca, is an interesting one. Labresca is actually an ancient Latin word that means grapevine. Uh, it can be found throughout Central and South America and throughout the Caribbean and is found in Texas and South Florida. Uh, it actually has a fairly wide range. It's found wherever uh, possum grape, muscadine grape, and cissus grow uh, and probably is more common than, than we think it is based on what we, how often we actually see them. And now after 30 years of searching, I've finally been able to document the life cycle, which goes to show you that here in South Florida, we have such an opportunity to experience all the beautiful things that nature has to offer right in our own backyards. All we have to do is stop, look, and pay attention and enjoy how beautiful South Florida is. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Keys Moz. We hope you enjoyed it and uh, maybe learned a few things along the way. Throughout this video series, we are going to be focusing on some of the amazing creatures that South Florida has to offer as we focus on our research on butterflies and moths in the Florida Keys. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and share it because when you do, we'll make sure we get you more of these fun and informative videos. Also, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. 
Uh, and if you want more information on these incredible moths and butterflies of the Florida Keys, check out the website. It's www.keysmoths.com. And guys, remember, enjoy South Florida. Isn't he awesome? <laughs>